They could play a decisive role in the US presidential elections. Latinos make up 15% of the country's eligible voters, a hotly contested segment with both candidates eager to win them over in their own way. Porque Kamala sabe que con determinación, cuando luchamos, ganamos. Can such a diverse group be said to have a Latino vote, though? Labeling uh, different ethnic groups is purposely done to, to divide these groups. You have those people who feel strongly about one way and those who feel strongly about the other ones. There is no Latino vote. There is Americans vote. The journey begins in Miami, a city where more Spanish is spoken than English. Today, over 65 million people, almost a fifth of the entire U.S. population, are Latino. They come from countries like Mexico, El Salvador, Cuba or the U.S. territory of Puerto Rico. Their votes could have a decisive impact on the presidential election. What issues are important to them and what are their views of the country? To find out, we visited three states where Latinos play a significant role. Pennsylvania, California and Florida. Mayra Jolie lives here in Miami. She grew up in the Dominican Republic and after studying law, immigrated to the US in the 1990s. You know when somebody's just stopping or just looking to see, because in the back it says Trump, and my side it says Trump, and the front it says Trump, and if you are on the other side it says Trump too. So I lower the window and he goes like, seriously, Trump, he's going to lose. And I go, what's that to you? <laughs> Despite herself having immigrated to the U.S., she supports Republican Donald Trump's strict immigration policies. When Trump said he's going to deport massive deportation, it's necessary. Because if in three and four years we have massive inv invasion, it has to be massive deportation. And we're not talking about the people that, that, that were already here. Everybody who entered within the last three years have no business coming here or being here. As an immigration attorney, she helps people who have come to the country legally or who qualify for permanent residency. Today, she has a meeting with a client outside of Miami. My dear, can I park over there? Because last time I parked here, they wanted me to take my flag down. Ah, they are, there they are. You see them? Those are the protesters. Okay, family, they hate me. I hate them back. In front of the immigration office, dozens are waiting for their appointments. All the, these people in the line? The people in the line are going to complain about me, the attorney, that I have a flag and they, I'm, I'm hurting their feelings? Give me a break, I'm an American. They, they are not. But my clients, they love me because they know, you know, I fight for them. It doesn't matter if I'm supporting Trump. That would be better for them because if they know I, I am Trump's friend, they're going to feel like, well, you know, I'm with her. And if Trump is her friend, he's not going to do anything to me. So they are smart. Her client is from Guatemala and wants to stay in the U.S. permanently. Her children were born here and, unlike her, are citizens. Here, the lawyer's open support for Donald Trump is met by many with opposition. That, what the, what the lawyer is doing, is bad. You know, that is proselytismo. You know, he's saying that uh, immigrants eat pets, they, they are saying that he's going to deport everybody. Everybody's in risk now. And this lady is coming here with that Trump, uh, and, and it's a federal building. They shouldn't be allowed to do that. Activists regularly meet in front of the immigration office. They want to offer migrants not just food and drinks, but also hope. Our journey takes us from Florida to California, Kamala Harris's home state. 
Amelia Sayer left Mexico with her family more than 50 years ago to make a fresh start here in Napa Valley, north of San Francisco. Within just one generation, the Sayer family has worked their way up from simple vineyard work. Today, they own their own winery. That's Pedro, my husband, his brother Armando, that's me, and that's my sister-in-law, Marta. Without us, immigrants, especially from Mexico, because over 90% of the workers in the vineyards hail from Mexico, uh, there wouldn't be any of these amazing wines that we're making, nor food on our table, because um, immigrants are willing to do all the hard work. It's hard work that doesn't always pay off. Migrant farm workers are often especially hard hit by poverty. Winery owners with Latin American roots, like Amelia, are rare. It's no wonder that for many Latinos, issues like inflation, the cost of living, and the healthcare system are crucial. For Amelia, however, the electoral decision isn't about heritage. We all want safety. Uh, we all want the same thing for our families, that um, they're safe, they're sheltered, they have you no know, food and access to an education. Uh, we, all of us, universally want the same thing. Expert Anna Sofia Pelaez from Florida also believes it's difficult to speak of a Latino vote. When you think about health care, education, these are things that worry everyone, that concern everyone. We have many of the concerns that most Americans have. You think about housing, you think about transit. Um, I think climate is certainly probably a, a greater concern in South Florida because of where we are and what we're already experiencing. For the past eight years with NGO Miami Freedom Project, she's been working to increase Latino voter turnout and to ensure their needs are being addressed by the political parties. If you come to Latinos and you just think like, oh, I'm just gonna speak to them in Spanish, but you're not speaking to them, about housing, you're not speaking to them about the, about the economy, you're not speaking, to addressing their concerns about climate, you're not showing them that there's, there are opportunities for them in a green economy, you're not gonna win them over. What's up, buddy, how are you? Good, good to see you, brother. All right, so you guys are section 428. So you guys are gonna be right behind Frankfurt High School. Just wanna make sure they came and tell you your number yet? I see, probably, because you guys closed out the show for us, so that's the end for us. We got like an hour and a half to get everybody in order. We're in Philadelphia in the state of Pennsylvania. The annual Puerto Rican Pride Parade is a highlight for Adonis Banegas. He heads the NGO Concilio, which advocates for the Latino community in the city. We are embedded in this city. We're proud of this city, as you can see from my hat. Uh, but more so, Puerto Ricans in this community do so much for this city. And uh, this is just one day, but we're here year round, but it's a great day to celebrate all Latinos, all Puerto Ricans in and around Philadelphia. Pennsylvania is considered one of the most important swing states in this U.S. election. In 2016, the Republicans won here. In 2020, the Democrats. The large Latino community could have a decisive influence on who wins this year, but Latinos are not a homogenous voter group here either. Uh, obviously, there's two sides to, to any story. You have those people who feel strongly about one way and those who feel strongly about the other ones. But while, you know, here in Philadelphia, and particularly our agency and several other partners really encourage just the the opportunity to register to vote and to go out and vote. And that's our like our main push uh, for anybody in, in Philadelphia, but particularly the Hispanic vote. While the majority of Latinos in the U.S. have historically voted for Democrats, recent polls show a decline in their support. It's why Kamala Harris supporters are working even harder to mobilize voters. But our primary focus is, there's, we expect about a quarter million Latinos in Pennsylvania voted in 2020. We, we want to get that number up to about 350. So our main focus is talking to Latino voters to make sure they come out and vote for Kamala Harris in November. Back in Miami. Dunia se le hizo el cambio de dirección, Nela. In her legal office, too, Mayra Holly makes no secret of her political views. She doesn't see any contradiction between her work and her stance. So the controversy, the controversy comes from if an immigration attorney is that one who will be taking or, or taking phone calls from overseas to help somebody come to the United States illegally. 
So at that point, that's not an immigration attorney. That's just a coyote, or coyote, a coyote with a title. Myra also rejects the categorization of voter groups on the basis of ethnic background. For her, only one thing matters. There is no Latino vote. There is Americans vote. And, and that's this American melting pot, there are Latinos that are voting, there are blacks that are voting, women that are voting. There is no vote that had to be uh, put it in some sort of a box. It's Americans voting and it's an American vote. And that's why, you know, that American vote is going for that American who's going who's gonna to do the touchdown and take America back to greatness. During a radio interview, Myra called for volunteers to get involved in Republican campaign offices. Now she wants to check in on them. This disappointed voter has found a closed campaign office. Myra calls the person in charge. Hi, Myra. I called out on the radio today for more volunteers to come. Now I'm standing here with one, and everything is closed. No, no, no. We are three weeks away from the election, and everything is dead here. There isn't a single sign for Donald Trump in any of the houses. Donald Trump's campaign is dead. The Republicans seem to have assumed a victory in Florida is already a given and are focusing on other states. They're taking the states that they think they have won for granted, no, which I think is wrong. At their vineyard in California, the Sayer family are hosting a feast for Hispanic Heritage Month. The main thing on the menu today, celebrating their culture and history with wine and Mexican food. Remember one thing, wine brings people together. And food and wine, conversation, multi-generations, we can all hang out with each other and, and, and enjoy each other's point of view. <laughs> I'm Mexican, but I feel at home in my adopted country. And I've embraced everything that is really wonderful about both cultures. Being at home in two worlds, a feeling that, despite their differences, many Latinos in the U.S. share. 